This video demonstrates how to build a notarized code signed installer for any software that you want to install onto a Mac computer. First, we'll go through the process of setting up the click install screen to build our installer, and then we'll code sign it and notarize it with Apple. We see we have a source folder and within the source folder, we're going to put the applications and other files that we ultimately want to be installed into a folder under the applications folder on the user's computer. After we go through the building process, it will output our finished installer and also a zipped copy of that installer. The reason for the zipped copy is most websites don't allow you to install and make, make it downloadable, just the, uh, the Mac application itself. So instead, you'll upload the zipped copy of the application. And when the user downloads it to their computer with Safari, it will auto unzip and then they'll have the setup file in their downloads folder. Or if they download with another type of browser, it will like Chrome, for example, it will just uh, download the zip file and then they can unzip it and then run the installer. So we're going to be setting up various uh, fields on this main screen of the click install application by selecting and naming a record and then filling in some of this information. Let's review some of the main fields in the uh, click install screen here. You'll want to point at the source folder that holds all the files that are going to be uh, built into your installer and also at the output folder. You might be tempted to select a cloud-based folder with something like uh, OneDrive or some other uh, type of uh, environment. I would highly discourage that because Click install uses API commands built into the Mac OS and also Apple's uh, code signing utilities, which Click install uses. In fact, uh, later when we talk about code signing, we're essentially just putting a pretty face uh, to that rather complex process in the background because everything or the co-signing process is all controlled by Apple and the utilities that it provides. But some of those API commands are probably not going to support some types of folder that are stored off in a cloud somewhere. So make sure that your source and your output folder are on your local hard drive. So in this main screen, you can see we've named the record. That can be any name you want, and that's just uh, what names to drop down here. We have a path to our source folder, our output folder. We've uh, given a name to the actual output folder that's going to be placed in the user's application folder during the install process. And this is the actual name to the, the setup file that's going to be generated in our output folder here. You can also add a path to a background image for our main install screen. And there's multiple background images that come with click install, or you can create one, one of your own. And you may want to put a, uh, a little picture for branding purposes up in the top uh, corner of that background screen. And you can do that with this field here. There's also a mechanism where you can set a logo, che logo checkbox and within preferences define an image. And then that way that image can be used across many different installers that you may want to build. But those are the main uh, screens fields that we're setting up for this installer. Uh, we also have a little bit of text in the main install screen. Uh, so this text appears at the top of the window. This is text appears in the middle of the screen centered. And then 
at the very bottom of that main install screen, uh, which we'll see here in a moment, we have a little copyright notice. Now, when we build an installer, we have uh, the option to uh, pre-check the characteristics of the computer before we actually do the install. So maybe your application requires a certain version of the Mac OS or certain RAM requirements or something like that. So you can have those pre-checks done before actually allowing the install process to continue. You can also decide what type of binary you want to generate. So you can generate a 64-bit Intel type binary for uh, 64 bit uh, Mac computers, uh, Intel based computers, or a 64 bit ARM processor computers, or a universal binary that uh, runs native on both uh, types of computers that Apple sells. There's some other options uh, to, to cover more detailed uh, things when building an installer that won't be covered within this video. But we will look at a couple of other screens here. On the license agreement, you can define a simple little license agreement that pops up and you can do that with some HTML code and customize it if you wish. You can click the default button to get a default build of this license agreement. Uh, and we'll look at what that looks like in a preview screen here. So this is kind of what it looks like by default, but if you know HTML, you can kind of modify uh, this HTML code so that when you build your installer, the user will have to confirm before they can actually continue with the install process. And we're also going to, when we build this installer, we're going to end up generating this uh, zipped copy of the installer and we can uh, give it the actual name that we want to produce for that zipped copy. So once we've done this much of it, we can go ahead and click the build button and it will output the installer we have thus far so we can go ahead and test that part of the process. The installer we've built is in our output folder so let's go ahead and run that and discuss uh, some of the different parts of this install screen. So we can see we have a title at the top, we have a background image, we have a little picture or a logo we put up in the corner, some text, we can have a link to a web page, copyright notice at the bottom. When the user clicks the install button, they're presented with the license agreement, which they can agree to, and then the install process continues. At the end of the install process, it's going to uh, actually highlight the newly installed folder, which is stored in the Applications folder. And inside there, we see our application that's ready to run. Now, for some applications that only consist of just the application file, you don't have other PDFs and other th or other things that you need to include, uh, you can make some changes to click install so that at, at the end of the install process, the only thing that's actually in the applications folder is the application itself rather than having it nested within a folder. Code sign Mac software, you'll need an Apple developer account, which costs about $99 a year. To create certificates, uh, it's a combination of things you do on your Mac computer and in your Apple developer account. And you'll be using, going through a set of instructions. Uh, we've provided kind of a detailed set of instructions on this instructions uh, panel presented with this button. But let me kind of outline the process. You're going to be using a utility uh, called Keychain Access. It's in the Utilities folder of your Applications folder. And as you go through this process, you'll be creating a, you'll be logging into your Apple Developer account, following some instructions. Uh, it will have you create a certificate signing request, and then you'll generate a certificate, download it, double-click it, it gets installed into your keychain, 
and uh, and then another certificate that gets installed into your keychain. So at the end of the process, you've created a couple of certificate or you've downloaded a couple of certificates, one of which you've created unique to your developer account, and they've been installed in your keychain. And then within click install, you're simply going to click the select button and select the path to that certificate, which we've stored all these files in a little uh, installer files folder. Uh, we've also in this same folder, you can see a copy of our background image that we've applied to our installer and a little uh, icon image that we've uh, put up in the top corner of the install screen. The end result is you have a path to the certificate file. And when the install process is building your installer here, it's going to first code sign any applications that you want to code sign. And then once it builds the installer, it will, it will code sign the installer itself. Now, depending upon how you built these applications, if you've built some custom libraries or whatever, you may need to uh, select and also code sign each of those libraries as well as the application. If the application was constructed from a development tool and you don't have any of your own libraries or whatever, custom libraries that you've created, you'll probably just be selecting just the application itself because all the required libraries are probably already co-signed by the creator of the development tool. That's also true if you use tools from, from Excel software. For example, if you're using AppProtect or Quick License to uh, build a wrapped application for like, for example, wrapping an Excel workbook into an application, you end up with your finished wrapped application. And that's really the only thing you need to uh, code sign. And you would do that by simply clicking on the Select Apps and Libraries button. And it will show, it will look in your main source folder and give you an option of all the different things you can code sign. But since everything else is already code signed, either by Excel software or by the development tool that creates the various library components that are all embedded within your application bundle, the only thing you're likely to need to code sign is just your application itself. So that's what we've done here. And now we're ready to go ahead and build a code signed version of our installer. Before you can code sign an application or your installer, you're going to have to download and install Xcode onto your computer. Xcode is a free download from Apple's Mac App Store, and it may take an hour or more to download and install it on your computer. It adds some utilities to a Mac OS machine, and those utilities are required to uh, facilitate Apple's code signing process. So let's assume we have already done that. And what we're going to do now is within click install, we've already referenced our main application and within our source folder and also have a path to our certificate. We're going to click the build button and it's going to build the installer and code sign it and here it's now ready to go. The final step in this process is to electronically send your installer to Apple for notarization. To do this, you'll first need to click on the instructions button. It brings up a list of instructions on how to set up some information in your notarization panel. You're going to log into your Apple account unlike your Apple developer account. This is just your regular Apple account. And follow those instructions to create an app-specific password. And then you can paste that into this field. You'll give the email uh, used for your 
Apple ID in this field, and you'll assign a unique uh, bundle ID in this field for your application. Once you've done that part of the process, you'll then click on the submit button and click yes, and it will electronically send your installer to Apple. It takes uh, a few minutes to send it. It takes probably 15 minutes for Apple to go through an automated process, give their stamp of approval, and reply back with an email. Once that has occurred, you'll be able to then just click the staple button and you'll now have a notarized version of your installer in the output folder and it will again wrap that into a zip file that's ready for upload to your website. This video covers the process of creating an installer for any kind of software that you want to install onto a Mac computer and then code sign and notarize that installer with Apple. Other more advanced topics that were not covered in this video include the ability to run an executable before doing the install process or after doing the install process. You can run uh, custom script commands that occur before or after the install process to copy files to other locations on the disk or look for the existence of a folder or a file and various other shell commands that you might want to run. You can also, at the end of the install process, take the user to a page on your website or play a video or other things to get them uh, started on their newly installed software. To learn more about these type of advanced features, uh, visit excelsoftware.com or look at some of the other videos on this topic.